Are, are any kids going to New Day this year? Anybody going down? You're a kid? We're not kids. We're not, well, <laughs> listen, when, I'm in my 60s, you're kids, okay? Um, but uh, New Day and then Jubilee Plus. And Jubilee Plus was birthed primarily to start to help churches understand what it meant to impact their communities for Jesus. At that time, 12 years ago, um, there was a growing understanding of poverty around, and so food banks like the Trussell Trust and other people were doing a lot of work. CAP had started, um, other things had started, but within New Frontiers, in reality, we were doing very little. Although, many years ago, those of you who have been around for many years will remember Simon down in Brighton, you know, and he's talking about the apostolic laying of foundations in a church, and, and uh, Paul says, and they told me to remember the poor, which was the very thing that I was going to do anyway. And if you've, if you've been around for a long time, you'll have heard that. Remember the poor. And Paul says, that's the very thing that I was going to do anyway. Okay. So we're going to explore Jubilee Plus. The first bit, I'm going to explore uh, the vision of Jubilee Plus. Then I'm going to explore a little bit about what we do. And then, um, hopefully, if we've got enough time, and I'll keep my eyes on the time, um, hopefully, um, we'll look at a case study, which is really what we're doing in Cockermouth very badly, but, we, but you know, you can do better, I'm sure. So just to introduce you then, if you go back to the first slide, um, there's a, um, a conference this year down in Liverpool on November the 9th. You'd be very welcome to come down to that, bring a group of people down. We in Cockermouth have been having... Um, um, we've been beaming it in because it's always been in the south so far um, so we've had groups of 10, 12, 15 people come down to the centre and watch it live on screen uh, but this year it's in Liverpool and so it's not that far away really for you to get down and do that there's also um, coming up um, on the 17th of July which is this week there's a partner day and partners basically you know, we in King's Church in Cockermouth, we're partners, and I'll be going down there um, to go uh, to be with them. It's a day conference, basically finding out what everyone else is doing and talking it through, and what, what, how can we learn from each other, what are we doing, what's the best practice, what is God saying to us, how do we do that? So we're going to start with the scripture, because uh, that's what you should do when you're preaching. Okay, we're going to start with the key scripture that Jubilee Plus has at its heart, which is... No surprise, Isaiah 61, okay? And um, it's also the scripture that Jesus, first time he preaches, he picks up the scroll and says, this is my manifesto. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all those who mourn, and to grant those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of faint spirit, that they may be called the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They will build up the ancient ruins, they will raise up the former devastations, they will repair the ruined cities, the devastation of many generations and uh, many churches stop at the point where uh, it says um, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour the day of the vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn and we stop we say these are the things we're going to do we're going to set people free we're going to bring good news to the poor we're going to bind up the brokenhearted liberty to captives blind, uh, sight to the blind opening the prisons proclaiming the year of the Lord's favour and then we stop like that's the job finished okay and Jubilee Plus's vision is is that all that but then Isaiah goes on to say they and who's he talking about those people he said they will who are they talking about he's talking about those people who were blind and are now seeing he was talking about those people that were in prison and are now set out he was talking about those that were poor and have now been set free from poverty etc etc they they will be called oaks of righteousness. They will be called the planting of the Lord. They will build up the ancient ruins. 
They will raise up uh, areas that have been devastated. They will repair the ruined costs. So Jubilee Plus's vision is doing uh, or helping churches do all those things that Isaiah says and releasing people into new life and new ministry and new leadership. It's not just setting people free from poverty. It's discipling them into the ways of God and letting them start to lead and disciple them into the things that God wants to do. Does that make sense? Please nod. It'd be great. Smile occasionally. It'd be even more wonderful. Roger told me what it was like preaching down here. I didn't believe him, but <laughs> clearly he was right. He wasn't wrong. So um, the other scripture that's really started to work within Jubilee Plus is Micah. Micah chapter 6 and verse 8, which again you'll know very well. He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? You want to know what God's will for your life is? You want to know what God's will for your life is? I did when I was 16, 17. What is God's purpose for my life? Where am I going? What am I doing? Who will I marry? What job will I have? Where will I live? What will my kids like? What, what is God's will for my life? Well, he's told you. It's to do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. That's it. That's it. If you want to know what God's will for your life is, it's very simple. Do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly. Thank you very much. It's been nice to see you. It's great to have you. Listen, our vision, Julie Puss's vision, is to help churches grasp hold of those two scriptures and wrestle them through as churches together. Churches that change lives. So we, as, as elders and leaders in churches, when I preach at home in Cockermouth, my purpose is to change lives. Just a little bit on the scale. Over the years, you can see how people have changed, but every week, week by week, just changing lives. So I want to change people's lives in the church. But equally, we as Jubilee Plus want to change lives of people out there in the streets. And we want churches to do that. We can't do that. Churches do. You do that. I live in Cockermouth. I don't expect you to come and help me change lives in Cockermouth. It'd be nice if you did. But you've got lives you need to change here in Kendall. Churches do it. And churches not just change lives in the church, they change lives outside. And because we're changing lives, we change communities. Communities change because of what you're doing. We equip through resources and events, like we just talked about. We um, equip through theology. What does the Bible say about poverty and justice? What does the Bible say about justice and evangelism? What does the Bible say about how we as Christians are involved? We want to support churches in discipleship, to change the DNA of the church towards justice. Justice isn't something that we do on the side. Um, I guess I, I've come from a background of, I've been in New Frontiers now for nearly 40 years. And I must admit that um, back in the sort of 90s and early 2000s, really, social justice was left to the activists and the extremists. That's the reality. It didn't really affect what we were doing in church. Those people that did strange things on the outskirts, outside, doing stuff that really didn't have anything to do with us as a church. And my opinion of that has changed radically because actually I think all Christians in all churches need to be involved in social justice out there in the streets. It should be in our DNA. When Paul was planting, and we've, we've, I've referenced it already, when he was planting churches, 
He was looking at the theology, he was looking at the structure, he was looking at governance, but in the DNA, remember the poor, which is the very thing that I wanted to do. Every Christian needs to be involved. It's not just left up to the elders, or the do-gooders, or the nice people. Okay, we all get involved. And so we want to encourage churches to do that. We want to encourage how, how do we grow in compassion, kindness, generosity. Now, I'm a Yorkshireman. Generosity does not come very easily. <laughs> Short in thumb, long in pocket. Okay. Listen, I've, I've been on a journey of learning how to be compassionate and generous. It doesn't come easy. For a long time, my mantra was, well, they probably deserved it, and that's their responsibility, isn't it? It's not mine. Okay, and I've had to come on a journey of learning about compassion and generosity and kindness, and we're still on that journey. But as Jubilee Plus, we want to see that in each Christian growing day by day. Not that we're all 100% generous and compassionate and kindness from day one. We have to grow in it and learn how to do that. Next slide. So to do that, we've got various videos, frequently asked questions. Here's a good one, um, which always bugs me. Um, if I'm walking down the street and there's a, a guy with a dog and some bags and a sleeping bag and he's asking for money, do I give it to him? That's a question that uh, Julie Plus explores on their frequently asked questions. Do, what do I do? Is it, you know, somebody... Um, we have a, something called MealShare, and um, I have to, we have a number of volunteers. We, we give out about 25 to 30 packs of food every week. And um, I always struggle with the ones that turn up with the brand new cars. Do I give them food or not? On the face of it, no. But actually, when you start to talk to people and you explore why they need food. I've come to the conclusion that I'm only one step away from the same scenario. Okay. People that thought things were good and they bought a car because life was good, suddenly illness strikes. They have a nervous breakdown. Their job goes. Suddenly. I had a real problem with a couple that turned up one day and we'd be giving them food for a while, and they said, oh, we've just bought a new dog. Really? And you can't put food on the table, but you managed to scrape enough food to buy, uh, money to buy a dog. And we had a long debate about it. What do we do? Well, we act compassionately, kindness, mercifully. And we swallow it, and we go, do you know what? God bless you. You might not make the right choices that I would make, Anyway, so those questions are all ex explored on the frequently asked questions. Stand in the gap prayer resources. So here we have um, a stand in the gap. You'll be getting some of these. But basically it's a discipleship course for people who want to explore what it means to be um, um, involved in social action and social justice. Praying about poverty. This is ideas to pray and think through. There's lots of them here. There's lots of different ideas. Things for your kids, things for your families, prayer space, you name it. I've got copies there. You can have a look at afterwards. There's um, Overflow Kids Curriculum, which we've used at King's, and it's really quite good fun. You know, um, if you want to know, uh, have some fun with Overflow, one of the things they do is they use toilet rolls a lot. And... Um, the idea of the toilet roll is, you know, like, um, is it Andrex or Kleenex? Which is Andrex? The one with the little puppy dog. Never runs out. God's mercy never runs out, etc., etc. And you can have a lot of fun with it. It's great. It's a good curriculum. Ten weeks. Teach the kids about compassion. What we found is that as kids learn about compassion, they teach their parents about compassion. Okay, that's the way it works. We've got to follow. This is the discipleship course. Again, 10 weeks. This one, this chapter I just opened up was about anger, so God must be wanting to tell me something. 
um, healing, compassion, mercy, favour. What do the, these words mean and how do we work them through? There's a social action course that you can go on and learn about or media training. I hate talking to the media. I'm not very good at it. Um, I say things that I ought not to say and um, get myself into trouble. But you can get some media training. There's um, these sort of things. Mind the gap. This is uh, about health inequality. This was started because um, about four years ago, um, I was going down to London for, for Jubilee Plus, um, waving at Graham as I well, um, flew past his farm. He never waved back. It was just <laughs> terrible. Never does. Never does. Stop. <laughs> so, um, but when we were going down there, it became, it was becoming clear. So, and my wife and I, we've been in Cockermouth now for 10 years. Um, getting to see a doctor in Cockermouth is virtually impossible. If there's any doctors here, it's not, um, it's not personal. That's just the way it is. And yet, um, West Cumbria is known for being one of the most obese places in the country. So, obese people in West Cumbria can't get to see a doctor. But increasingly, the problem was that actually the, the uh, dentists were all moving from NHS to private. I don't know if you have that problem here. But you cannot get an appointment with NHS dentists in Cockermouth for love and the money within a 20-mile radius. So the, the most number of, uh, today, um, operations at Carlisle Hospital, the most frequent operation now is children having their teeth removed because they can't get to see a doctor. They live in families that are obese, they eat things that they ought not to be eating on a regular basis. They can't get to see a doctor or a dentist, so they end up in hospital to have their teeth removed. So this little document, Mind the Gap, is all about how you as a church can get involved in praying for or thinking about health inequalities in Kendall. Our problems are not your problems, your problems are not my problems, but there are common themes. Okay, Blackpool not very far from here. Blackpool um, is now, I, I forget the numbers now, but the number of people per doctor is so big that they can't cope with it anymore. Health inequality drives poverty, and poverty drives health inequality. Because, you know, um, a friend of mine works at the, uh, this is where I've got to be careful, I'm on screen, so I'll be careful. Be careful, Paul. But, um, Getting specialists to come to work in West Cumbrian hospitals is getting harder and harder because it's a place they don't want to live. So not only do we have poverty, then we have health inequality because they can't get the right people to do the right job at the right time. And so it goes on and on. And Jubilee Plus explores these things because um, poverty and health are two drivers that go together. I don't know if you've come across it, but there's a church which I'm really impressed with and I want to go and see and see how it works. But in uh, America, we, ha we have a church, Christ Central Church in Warrensboro, and they have, um, they've recognized this is a major problem. I mean, obviously, in America, it's a different system, um, but um, they've recognized that dentistry is such a big problem that they've employed a dentist one day a week and they've kitted out a room in their church for a dentistry, for free dentists, for any person that rolls up. And they've got so many people coming that they're, they're having to think about how do we do that two or three or four days a week. Now, I don't think that would work in Cockermouth, but it's, it, it made me think they're doing something different. They've thought about the problem, they're thinking outside the box. So what can we do thinking outside of our box in Cockermouth? Does that make sense? So Jubilee Plus is looking at all these things and trying to draw them together and encourage churches like you, encourage churches like us in Kings to think about how do we do things? What's going on? How do we work it all through? One of the questions that they're struggling with at the moment um, and thinking about is 
that food banks, as an example, have been fantastic. But all they're doing is putting a stick in plaster over the real problem. So we've got, as I said, 25 people in Cockermouth come every week. And we'll keep giving them food for as long as they need it. But I'd much prefer to be able to talk about how do I get you out of poverty, not keep giving you food. That's really important. So we're thinking about that. What are the drivers that make people or put people in poverty? And what can we as a church do to think about that in a different way, to get them out of poverty so they don't have to come? It might be things like writing a CV. It might be helping them to get a job. It might be, actually, I might have to start a business to employ some of these people. And these are some of the things that Jubilee Plus are thinking about, talking about. We want to go beyond just a sticking plaster. We want to go upstream to find what the problems are and see if we, as churches, can't start to solve that problem. The thing is, you've got a new government, and I don't want to be political, but we do have a new government, and they are looking at all sorts of things. Jubilee Plus is involved in the, in the discussion about the two-child cap that's on benefits. It's estimated that over, I think it's over 4 million children have been caught out because the government will give benefits for two children but not for the third. Okay? Now, you might have political views on that and I'm, I'm not saying one way or the other, but what that means is that actually more and more kids are driven into poverty than ever before. You know, if you want to be political about it, you know, write to your local MP and talk, tell him that you want something to happen about child poverty. This is 2024, and Jubilee Plus is considering those issues. Time's going, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to look at the case study. Mark 4, uh, Mark, sorry, Mark, yeah, Mark 4, verse 31 to 32. And this is my favorite parable, the parable of the mustard seed. Okay, and it's very simple. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It, that is the kingdom of God, is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on the earth. Yet when it's planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can perch in the tree. And I've read that for a, a number of times and I've thought about it and I've wondered what that's all about. The kingdom of God is small. It starts off small. But it grows and it grows and it grows. We feel like that as a church in Cockermouth. We're probably not the similar size. We feel small. It feels very small compared to what's going on outside our church rooms. But the kingdom of God starts off like that, but it grows. Every time you meet somebody or you do something or you help somebody, the kingdom of God has come and it's grown. And it took me quite a while to recognize that last sentence. Having been involved in um, refugee care and all sorts of things over the years, take me a long time to look at that last line with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade who are the birds are we the birds I don't think so I'm part of the kingdom I'm in the kingdom who are the birds sorry the lost the people out there that are looking for security what do birds find in a tree they find shade, shelter, food, protection, home, rest, and loads of things. I thought, well, who are the birds? So when we do our um, meal share, and the kingdom of God is on display, meeting people's needs, the people that come in and they're picking stuff up, they're the birds. They come 
because they're lonely or vulnerable. They come because they need, need security or shelter. They come because they need food. They come because they need a home. They come because all sorts of reasons. But at that point, they're coming and they're resting in the tree. They're saying, for whatever reason, I'm finding this kingdom thing quite helpful for this period of time. And that's really helped me because the birds aren't part of the kingdom. They are outside the kingdom and they come into it and they find everything they need. They might fly off and might come back and fly off and come back. My job is to, to help grow that tree. So we're going to join some dots very quickly and think about um, things up in Cockermouth, but how that works for you. So the next slide is, we want to, in Cockermouth, we want to desire to impact our community. Do you want to do that? Do you want to impact your community? How do we do that? When I arrived uh, 10 years ago, uh, Tom and Sam, Tom still had hair. I still got hair. It was a different colour. Um, when I arrived 10 years ago, um, we, I was just arrived after the 2011 census. Has anybody ever looked at the census? It's complicated. There's a lot of stuff there. But out of that, the council drew out, Cum uh, Cumbria County Council as it was, drew out of it their three or four main social goals that they had for uh, West Cumbria. If you get any, ever, ever the chance to look at it for, you, for, Keswick, uh, for Kendall, it's really important. Because it told me that their priorities were young people under 18s, young families who couldn't get housing because it's really expensive or there isn't enough, and the other thing was the elderly. Uh, those were the three priorities that Cum Cumbria County Council wanted to look at. Since that point, added on to that has been food poverty and energy poverty. Those two things together combine. And so, when we started thinking about how are we going to impact our community, there are two ways that we can do that. One is, somebody within the church comes to Ed and Graham and David and says, I've got a bright idea. I think God's speaking to me about. And... Uh, this is what I think should happen, and I think the church should get involved. And Ed and the elders have to look at it and go, mm, yes, mm, no, maybe, mm, let's think about that, um, etc. And that does happen. When I was in Teesside, um, a lady who was an, a real activist in refugees kept bugging the elders. You must do something about refugees, 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 refugees. And it's like, yes, 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 yes. You know that parable of the woman that goes and knocks on the door of the judge and says, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And in the end, we gave in because it was just like that. Okay. That does happen. And actually, out of that has sprung an amazing ministry to uh, asylum seekers and refugees. The other way is for us to be a bit more scientific and look at what is the needs of our community from a scientific pers perspective. What does the analysis say? And both those coming together really important. So we identify the need, then how do we, what we're going to do about it? Sometimes the blindingly obvious is not the best option. Sometimes it is. But let's talk about it, let's explore how do we start to meet that need. That's why Jubilee Plus would do something like an audit with you, uh, to look at the things you're doing, the things that you want to do, and how can you do it, and how can you do it better. Not telling you, but exploring it with you. How do we meet the need? What resources do we actually need? Jesus said, no man goes into a battle without thinking about what the cost is going to be. And believe me, once you get on the front foot of social action like some of you are already, it is a battle. It's a battleground. And at times it can be quite painful. So we have to join all these dots together. We know what the need is. We've identified it. 
we've got a desire to do something about it, and we um, start to talk about meeting the needs, and then we talk about resourcing. Resourcing is finance and people. Give me some money and give me some people, I can change the world. Okay? If you cannot get involved in your social action project because you're too busy or because you're working or because of time of life or illness or whatever, you can pray, that's right, but you can give and you can encourage the people that are because it's lonely and it's hard work. You can all get involved. So King's Church Cockermouth, what did we do? Well, we identified, we talked about what do the council actually want and need? And so we started to develop something. So youth. There was no actual youth provision in Cockermouth at all, apart from scouts. Nothing. So uh, I went to a meeting with the council and a number of other agencies that were involved. And getting to know the council and the local council people is critical because they tell you all sorts. Okay, and so we met with them and they said, there's no provision and we don't know what to do. And um, they said, we'll schedule another meeting in four weeks' time um, and see what comes out. So we went back and talked about it. We had another meeting with various people who are supposed to be involved in youth around West Cumbria, there's nothing happening, and we went around the table and all of them said, no, we don't know what to do, we don't know what to do, we don't know, and I sat there and said, you know what, we'll start something. We'll, we'll put our hand up. We can do that. And so we started talking to them and they said, great, um, we can give you some money. Great. Um, and, you know, the usual question of, you're not going to proselytize, are you? You're not going to tell people about Jesus. And they said, well, actually we are. So if, if you don't want to give us your money, that's fine, but we'll do it anyway. Oh, okay. So we will give you some money. So they gave us some money. We had got some people. We started a youth project, Friday night youth drop-in. There's no gospel content whatsoever. Okay? Just hear that. There's no gospel content whatsoever. The kids come for four hours. They get a free meal. Um, they... Um, play games, they play Wi-Fi, they play all sorts of stuff, they do things I don't understand, something to call you, um, some football thing that they do, and I, my thumbs don't work quick enough. They play snooker, they do crafts, they can come and go as they wish. No gospel content at all. And yet from that, we are taking kids down to New Day on a year-by-year -year basis, where they do hear the gospel. And they're around us for a whole week, and some of these kids are vulnerable and weak, and they're on the edge. We had a school teacher the other last, last year. They had a child who was um, in difficulty, autistic, really struggling, no friends. And her advice was to this uh, young person, what you need to do is you need, need to go down to King's Church to amplify because they've got lots of kids and they'll help you. Wow. That was like, that will keep me going for another five years. We don't do it perfectly, 